This is my vintage Slingerland drum kit that I've had for almost two decades now. I am a drum nerd, and I know many of you out there are drum nerds too, so I thought I'd share some geeky details about this kit and my history with it. And of course I'm going to play it a bit for you toward the end of the video, so if you want to skip ahead to that, you can find chapter links down that way. Now, I've wanted to make this video for quite a while because this kit really means a lot to me. But I was finally motivated to make the video because of a recent development that I'm not going to talk about just yet because I'm saving that for a future video. But anyway, back to this thing. So what you see here is actually less than half of a 1973 Slingerland Concorde, which was the massive kit that was on the cover of their 1973 catalog. Now, if you're not familiar with the Slingerland brand, I can give you a brief history. The company started in 1912, and they made a lot of different musical instruments. The drums became incredibly popular with Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa and many other jazz drummers from the early to mid 20th century. The most famous drum kit of theirs from that era was the Radio King and most notably the snare drums. They were made from a solid piece of maple with reinforcement rings to keep the drum round rather than using multiple plies of different woods. And this gave that snare a very unique iconic sound that is still quite sought after today. Drum collectors love that snare. So Slingerland continued making drums until the mid 80s and then the company changed hands a few times. Gretsch even owned it for a little while. And then in the mid 90s, Gibson bought Slingerland. They tried to revive the drums, didn't have much success with it. And then in 2018, Gibson filed for bankruptcy. And the most recent good news was that in late 2019, DW bought Slingerland and they had plans to start making Slingerland drums again especially those Radio King snares, but I haven't heard anything else since then. If you know anything about that, please head on down to the comments and fill us in. All right, now that we're all caught up on that, here's the deets on this kit. This is straight from the 1973 catalog, and boy, look at all this stuff. Two 24-inch kick drums, six toms ranging from 12 inches all the way up to a whopping 20 inch floor tom, plus a six and a half by 14 inch snare, and a true sign of the times, bongos. I've never really been into massive drum kits with lots of drums. I obviously like larger drum shell sizes for a bigger sound, but not drums upon drums upon drums. In 2005, when I was working at a music store and somebody brought in the full kit, minus the snare and the bongos, unfortunately, I was faced with a tough decision because it was in very rough shape. There was a lot of hardware that was missing, so it was going to cost me a lot of money to buy the whole thing and fix all of it up to make it playable. So I worked out a deal with the owner to split the kit down the middle into two drum kits. And of course I got the bigger half of the toms that is 14 and 15 inch rack toms and the gargantuan 20 inch floor tom. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, how could you possibly break up that massive vintage kit, you absolute monster? I do feel somewhat bad about it, but again, it wasn't in great shape. Not all of the original pieces were there. The tom mounts had been replaced by Rogers brand tom mounts, which isn't terrible, but it's not original. All of the resonant side hoops and tension rods were completely missing. The copper wraps are scratched and worn, and best of all, both kick drums had a heavy metal pipe installed inside the drums that was attached under the tom mount and bolted through the shell on the bottom. I truly, to this day, have no idea what that was for. If you have any ideas, please let me know down below, but you get the idea. It wasn't going to be worth a lot of money 
especially not if I tried to spend a whole bunch of money fixing it up to try to get it close to its original condition. So I had to make a very hard decision and cut it in half. And on the flip side of that, splitting that kit down the middle, of course, created two drum kits. So not only did I get what I want with the larger drum sizes, someone else still got an amazing kit with 12, 13, 16 inch toms and an oversized 24 inch kick. That is still a great kit. So that makes me feel much better about it knowing that somebody out there has the other half of this kit. It's kind of like we have a diptych drum kit thing going on, which is pretty cool if you think about it. It's like finding out you have a long lost twin sibling somewhere. Not really, but I just hope whoever they are, that they have gotten at least as much enjoyment out of their half of the kit as I have from this thing all these years. Now, you already saw that the 14-inch Tom is not here. I still have it, just haven't used it for many years because I like having this configuration here so I can fit the ride in. But honestly, I am kind of missing having a third tom, especially now that I'm doing all of these drum covers. Uh, some songs just call for a bit more range in the toms. So remember that thing that I am not really gonna talk about just yet? Future video. Anyways, back to the geeky stuff. To the best of my knowledge, this kit was manufactured in 1973 in Slingerland's drum factory that was located in Niles, Illinois. During that period between 1970 and 1978, Slingerland was primarily using a three-ply shell construction with inner reinforcement rings at each end of the shell. So the shells themselves were made from a very thin inner ply of maple, a thicker middle ply of poplar, and then a thin outer ply of mahogany and the reinforcement rings were solid maple. So that's what gives these drums their particular sound that you're gonna hear in a minute. Now, I have seen some Slingerland owners who have refinished that mahogany outer ply, and as you can imagine, it looks incredible, but I don't know if those drums had wraps on them beforehand or if they came that way to begin with. So I don't know if it would be possible to remove the wraps from these drums carefully without damaging that outer ply, but if I can do it, and if I have the tools and uh, I'm confident enough that I can make that happen someday, I would definitely love to make this kit look a lot better than it does right now. So I played this kit live quite a bit during the late 2000s in Tucson, Arizona. I was in a band called Pod People with my brother Dan and our longtime friend Chad. Another fun thing is that for a while, Chad actually worked at Grandmaster Recorders in Hollywood, California. And because of that, we took the opportunity to record this kit in their legendary drum room. Now, if you want to hear how amazing that drum room sounds, probably the most famous example is Foo Fighters' My Hero. Dave Grohl recorded one drum track in that drum room, and then a second drum track in the studio's parking garage. So that's where that incredible sound comes from. You can also hear Dave Grohl playing some absolutely badass drums on Killing Joke's 2003 self-titled album, which in turn led to Trent Reznor hiring Dave to go to that studio again to record drums for some of the tracks on With Teeth. Sadly, the studio is no longer there, but in its time, it was definitely one of the best places to record drums, and I'm so glad that we took the chance to record this kit in that incredible room. So this video is primarily about the three-piece Slingerland kit, but of course, I should also mention the other members of the group. I already made a video about the Zildjian K-Suite cymbal pack that I got that came with 15-inch hi-hats, 17 and 19 inch crashes and a 21 inch ride. I absolutely love these cymbals. They sound so good and I have had to change the way that I play to ensure that they continue sounding good for a very long time. 
And last but not least is my five by 14 inch Ludwig snare that I've had for decades now. I never really bothered to find out exactly what kind of a Ludwig this was until making this video. So I did some digging and I am 90% sure this is an L600 SL series from the mid 80s. And I figured that out by looking at a few things. First of all, the black and white colored badge, the P85 style strainer, the style of lugs, and the fact that this is actually a chrome wrap over a four ply maple shell. Now, this is not a top of the line Ludwig snare by any means, but it's still got a great sound. I like the fact that it does have that wood shell in there. It gives it a nice punchy sound. And uh, I've been happy to call this my only snare for quite a while now. Also because I couldn't really afford to get another one, but I may actually start a collection here soon. We'll see. All right, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk about it. How about we let the kit speak for itself? So, my final thoughts on the Slingerland kit. I absolutely love it. I knew as soon as I saw it that I had to have at least part of it. It still sounds pretty damn amazing after all these years. It does have some quirks. Having a 20 inch floor tom is incredibly rare and it's been a great conversation piece for playing live shows. At the same time, it's difficult to find heads for it that are not bass drum heads. I just had to wait four months for a special order pinstripe head for this. It does have some structural issues. Some of the inner plies have cracked and split in some places, but it's been that way since I bought it. It doesn't look like any of that damage is that significant. I already mentioned the copper wraps have never looked that great, but this kit has so much sentimental value. I am sure that I will never get rid of it. All that being said, I'm at a point now where buying a new kit is actually a possibility for me. This is only the third kit that I've owned in all the years that I've been playing, and it never hurts to try something new with a different sound and a different configuration. So that's something that I am definitely thinking about a lot more. In fact, 
may have already happened, 